So my little girls have a dream light in their room and they love it. We turn it on every night and it kind of displays little patterns and lights and colors on the ceiling of their room. The problem is it's not connected to Home Assistant. It's probably time to upgrade. So let's take some programmable LEDs, a Wi-Fi control chip, and of course, Home Assistant, and build the coolest little DIY dream light you've ever seen. These are the parts for my dream light. LED matrix, 16 by 16, WS2812 LEDs, 5 volt. D1 mini, running the pinky LED sketch. A little tin box that I got from the dollar store and a few momentary push buttons that I had sitting around and a big flower jar or vase, I guess, also from the dollar store. I've got it all wired up and it's working. So let me show you what it does. One button is the power button so I can turn it on. It's going to be very bright. With another button, I can change the colors. And with the third button, I can change the effect. <laughs> That's just solid. And then change the color if you want. And then more effects. These are all the same effects that I have running on the LED strips around my house. Now, of course, this wouldn't be complete without Home Assistant control. When you have the pinky LED sketch running on the D1 Mini, Home Assistant will auto-discover a new light entity. For me, it's called Dream Light. From here, you can turn it on and off. You can change the brightness. You can change the speed at which the effects run. And here, you can change the effects. When you're on an effect that is controllable by colors, and there are, I think, five of those, then you can change the colors as well here with the color wheel. And if you choose the effect E131, then you can use something like X lights and run whatever different kind of crazy cool pattern you can come up with on your little LED matrix. If you're not running a pattern on there, then it just turns everything off. Is that cool or what? All this is also controllable through MQTT. If you don't have it already, you're going to need to download the Arduino IDE. You can get that from this page here and go through the steps to install it. Once you've got it installed, you can go to the pinky LED repository on GitHub and download the whole thing. Now we're going to extract it. I'm going to put it in the folder where I know my Arduino sketches live. If you don't know where your Arduino sketches live, then open up the Arduino IDE, go to preferences, and right here at the top, not including the part that says libraries, that's where your Arduino sketches live. To open it up in the IDE, you can just go to the directory wherever you saved it and click on this pinkyleds.ino file. The pinky LED sketch has two parts. The pinky LED tab has a bunch of stuff that controls everything and unless you want to get in and change the effects, you don't need to do anything here. Where you do need to make changes is in the config.h tab. You need things like your Wi-Fi, your password, MQTT broker, if you want to change the data pin that you're using for the effects, if you have 2811 lights instead of 2812. When you do test your lights, you may find that it's not in GRB order. It might be RGB. I don't know if there's any others, but make sure this is right as well. And then make sure you have the correct number of LEDs. This pin that you're going to use to connect to the button to change the effect is labeled RX on a D1 Mini. This is the button that changes the color. So the color button is D7 and D6 is the button that powers it on and off. And I think that's about it. When you go to compile, make sure you've got the right board chosen. Use a good upload speed. 115200 works well. The first time you upload it, you have to do it through the USB port on your computer. But after that first time, you'll be able to connect to it and make updates and changes over the air. So even if you have it installed somewhere and you want to change some effect, you can do that here without unplugging it and bringing it back to your computer. That's fantastic. You might need to make sure that you've got these libraries installed 
and that you've got the correct versions. Anytime you have to go through the process of compiling a sketch in Arduino, there are quite a few variables and everybody's installation might be a little different. So it's possible, in fact, it's kind of likely that you'll get some errors when you first try and compile this. If you do get errors, they'll show up down here and it should give you a decent idea of what you need to do. My guess is in most cases, it's gonna be that you don't have a library that it needs or you don't have the right version of a library that it needs. Unfortunately, this sketch and this kind of setup doesn't really lend itself to a pre-compiled binary. You're gonna to have to do it yourself. Sorry. All right, a couple things to tell you about here with the hardware part of it. Uh, one thing is if you use a matrix like this, there are 256 LEDs on this matrix. Each LED is gonna use probably on average about 20 milliamps with a maximum of probably around 50, maybe 60 milliamps a piece. So if you do that math, 0 0.02 amps times 256 is gonna be just over five amps. So when you're sizing a power supply for this, make sure you get one that's big enough. If you try and run this off of like a five volt phone charger, it is not gonna work. And you'll probably melt your phone charger. That might be kind of fun. If you do melt your phone charger, make sure you post the video for us. Another thing I learned the hard way on this particular project is that some D1 minis have, I guess, a crappy voltage regulator. When I tried to connect power directly from the power supply to the five volt pin on the D1 mini and then to the LEDs, the D1 mini wasn't behaving correctly. And it turns out in some cases, depending on your manufacturer, this five volt pin doesn't work to power the board very well. So what I ended up doing was grabbing a micro USB cable that only had power and ground. Some do, some have the data wires too, but in this case, I knew that this one only had power and ground. So I cut it, separated the power and ground wires, and then used those uh, connected directly to the power supply wires. I guess I could show you that. So on the back side here, what you should be able to see is that there's a power and ground that go to the LED matrix. Then there's also power, ground, and input or data that go to the matrix. What I've done is connected these two wires here, which come from my power supply, together with the two wires that power the LED matrix and the two wires that go to my micro USB plug that is connected to my D1 mini. So that's how I get five volts everywhere that it needs to go. If I wanted to connect another matrix or some other LEDs, it's got this female connector here that you could use. Now here on the D1 mini, you can see all my connections. I've got this red wire connected to D7, and that's going to the color control button. The blue wire is connected to D6, and it's going to the power button. And this yellow wire is connected to RX, and it's going to the effects control button. Then I've got a ground wire, this white one, that goes to one switch and then just piggybacks to the other switches. The D4 pin is what sends the data signal to the LEDs. That's this orange one, and it just plugs into this connector on the LEDs. I also want to point out that right now, for some reason, I have one LED, the very first LED, that just keeps blinking even after I've hit the power button. I don't know why. Someday maybe I'll troubleshoot it. But for now, I just put a little piece of tape over it. All right, let's see if it works. Oh, that's bright. Okay, that was way too bright, but it worked. All right, next step is going to be to tie this all up like a tube and then stick it in a jar and then fill it full of glass beads. Freaking gorgeous.
I've stuffed as many glass beads as I can in this jar now. I can't get any more up here around the neck. So what I'm going to do is hot glue a bunch of these glass beads on the outside just to finish off uh, this neck part. <laughs> all right, there it is. It's all done. You can see where I hot glued glass beads around the bottom here. And it's working fantastic. I think it looks great. <laughs> Loving it. Should we put it through the paces? You want to see some effects? Okay, you talked me into it. Well, that's it. There it is. The cutest little dream light you ever saw. I'm pretty happy with it. And even more important, the girls love it. That's a win-win. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.